One of the worst things ever set loose upon Canada by the CBC is back again to torment and scold Canadians about our comfortable lifestyles. Yes, friends, I'm talking about David Suzuki. He, his oversized ego, and his equally large amounts of hypocrisy are flying across the country to fight climate change. If you've been following the conversation on climate in this country, you might have heard that Canada's warming twice as fast as the rest of the planet. You've heard climate deniers spouting hate and racism. You've seen the climate peacocks in government strut around making big promises while doing absolutely nothing to stop the train wreck of climate catastrophe. Yes, friends, some of Canada's most prominent movers and shakers in the environmentalist movement, including Avi Lewis, who you saw right there fear-mongering you about drowning deer, and of course, St. David Suzuki, are touring seven cities across the world's second largest country using fossil fuels to lecture all the little people about how we need to use fewer fossil fuels or the world is just going to burn right up. It's part of something called the leap, whatever that is. And these people are coming to convince us all that we need a Green New Deal, something even the craziest Democrats in the United States, except for maybe... Bernie Sanders and AOC aren't crazy enough to adopt. And did you notice that Abby Lewis called the United We Roll convoy to Ottawa and Maxime Bernier racist deniers? Of course he did. It's the new shut up. Now, if you want to see David Suzuki, he's not going to be at all the Leap Town Halls. He was already a keynote speaker at the Toronto event. And he's scheduled to speak at the LEAP events being held in Montreal, Ottawa, Halifax, and Vancouver. Looks like Edmonton and Winnipeg are not going to be graced with St. David Suzuki's presence. In the CTV article explaining the big plan of these LEAPsters to convince us all to live more carbon frugal, Suzuki lamented how nobody actually cares about his incessant fear-mongering anymore. He said, In May, the United Nations released a study saying we are causing a catastrophic rate of extinction, threatening a million species of plants and animals. The next day, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle had a baby and pushed everything out of the news. Well... Dr. Fruitfly, that's because your doomsday predictions are missing the mark more and more all the time. And so more and more people are leaving your doomsday cult. Now, if you want to know how serious these leapsters are about the carbon-induced end of the world they keep promising us, we really don't need to look any further than their travel itineraries. They started this junket in Toronto and then they flew east to Montreal and then they come back west to Ottawa and then they go all the way east to Halifax and then they go all the way west to Edmonton and then they go further west to Vancouver and then back east to Winnipeg. These carbon intensive hypocrites are crisscrossing the entire country instead of moving east to west or west to east in the most cost effective and of course energy efficient manner and that's a very strange route to take if you don't care much for mindlessly wasting fuel just for the sake of it all. And the venues these leap town halls are being held in, they're mostly musty Unitarian and United Church basements. And you know, they tell me climate change fanatics aren't part of some sort of New Age end times religion. Anyway, these kinds of churches are Canada's fastest shrinking congregations for some very good reasons. One of which is their constant evangelizing for the likes of Suzuki instead of, you know, Jesus. But according to the Leap website, the churches all have gender-neutral bathrooms. You know, the things that matter. And the tickets for these events? Well, they cost a mere pittance. Somewhere between 10 and 15 bucks a pop. Now, that's not anywhere near enough to cover David Suzuki's Usual speaking fee, I'm not sure what it is these days, but back in 2013, Suzuki was taking home a cool $30,000 an hour to speak. That, of course, means some other groups are sponsoring these events because, while there's no groundswell of support to necessitate a larger venue than a dying United Church basement, 
So someone's paying for Blessed Suzuki to speak. Now, if we take a look at the Leap website, we can see exactly who's behind this all. Presented in partnership with Briar Patch Magazine, the Canadian Union of Postal Workers, Climate Strike Canada, the Council of Canadians, Courage, Delivering Community Power, and the Migrant Workers Alliance for Change. Of course, there's no surprise there. That's the list of the usual Canadian progressive cranks that put on these kinds of events. But there's also one other major group on the list right here. Each evening will feature amazing speakers, art, and music, and close with a barnstorm led by 350.org. Honestly, that sounds awful. But yeah. 350.org. We know, thanks to the tireless efforts of intrepid researcher Vivian Krauss, the head of 350.org, Bill McKibben's campaigns have received more than 100 grants since 2005 for a total of $100 million U.S. from 50 charitable foundations, with about a half of that $10 million coming from the Rockefeller Foundation. So this whole thing, it's just a foreign funded junket bought and paid for with money meant to cripple us here in Alberta, led by a bunch of so-called leaders in the environmentalist movement who couldn't even be bothered to plan an itinerary in a cost effective or energy effective way, you know, the way you or I would. When these people start acting like there is a climate crisis instead of just getting rich talking about one, I might start to care then. But probably not. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. We couldn't do what we do here at the Rebel without generous support from you at home. Now, one of the best ways to help us is to help us spread the news by liking and sharing our videos. Or, even better, treat yourself to a Rebel subscription today.